Now Martha Teichner introduces us to a true man of the world. Tell me this isn't exactly what you'd imagine the workshop of some crazy Victorian genius would look like. In the era of Google Maps, who makes a living smoothing wrinkles out of a continent or coloring in the coast of Madagascar? Making globes by hand was pretty close to a lost art when Peter Bellerby decided to give his father one for his 80th birthday in 2008 and couldn't find any worth buying. So I kind of thought, um, I've got a few months spare, um, I'll make a globe. You thought it would be easy? I thought it would be really easy. Wrong. Two years later, I sold my house, I sold my car. To bankroll this Absolutely. globe? Absolutely, yeah. And meanwhile, your father's birthday came and went. More than one of them, yeah. <laughs> By the time he'd gotten one right, he'd spent $250,000 on it and figured out he had the makings of a business. But we have to adapt. I mean, this is a calendar. Huge yeah. calendar, oh my lord. Bellerby had to improvise. He had to crack the mystery of how exactly it was done in centuries past. There isn't a manual for globe making. Mathematically, I, I had my head around how it works relatively easily. That wasn't a struggle. It's the side of actually applying a piece of um, flat paper to a sphere. That was the struggle. We start with the cartography. Alaska is the first piece to go on every time. Why? We could realistically start in any position. It just is nice watching the world develop. To work here... He'll be here for about 15 minutes on that piece. One piece? Yeah. Patience is required. You need to get within about 0.1 of a millimeter. God is said to have created the world in six days. But here at Bellerby Globe Makers in North London, try with this one. It takes at least six months even to learn how. If you've had too much coffee, this could be really disastrous. Yeah, no, you're doing a really good attempt there. Attempt, that's the key word, because I've just cut into Brazil. Oops. Oh, really bad. Oh, I really okay. messed up Paraguay. Okay. So, okay, so now what? I put this in water. Um, just plain water. Just plain water. And then we need to stretch it over the globe. Try pushing the paper in both directions. Oh, it's hard. Through the, through the middle. It, it makes wrinkles. Yeah. And how do you get the wrinkles out? You don't make them in the first place. The company can make only around 600 globes a year, many on commission. They're back ordered for months. Even the legs for stand models are crafted by hand. So a Bellerby globe is not cheap. The smallest, soccer ball sized, runs more than $1,300. The biggest, the Churchill, 50 inches in diameter, more than $80,000. The cost, a function of both its size and the labor required to make it. This one's taken a year and two months. The Churchill was inspired by globes the same size that General George Marshall had presented as Christmas presents to Winston Churchill and President Franklin D. Roosevelt during World War II. He says he'll only ever make 40 make Churchills. Wonderful, when it's spinning, it'll go for two minutes. Um, just all by itself? Just all by itself. Wow. For a globe maker, the map can be tricky. We sometimes might call a, a country by two names. Taiwan. Taiwan, Chinese Taipei. We might have borders that we put down as disputed borders. And even with India, if I sell a globe in India... What do you do about Kashmir? Well, th this is the problem. I can go to prison for six months if I mark it incorrectly. Before he made globes, Peter Bellerby worked in television, ran a bowling alley and a nightclub, restored houses and an antique car. He's begun working on this 1960 Bentley. The globes and this. What's the common denominator? Obviously, I love amazing design. So, whether it's cars or globes, amazing. Peter Bellerby has made the art of the elegant anachronism 
his life's work. Extraordinary.